Hi, I'm Cooper and I'm a water efficiency specialist at Contra Costa Water District. Today we're going to discuss efficient irrigation techniques and how to effectively program your irrigation controller. This is important because the average home uses over 50% of its water outdoors and in the landscape. We all know that water is a precious resource in California where droughts are common. That's why it's essential to understand how to irrigate efficiently and how to program your irrigation controller to maximize water savings. The set it and forget it method is a sure way to waste water and throw your money down the drain. Most homes have an irrigation controller and it's likely mounted in your garage or on the side of your house. Getting familiar with your irrigation controller is crucial if you want to irrigate efficiently and save water. So make sure to review your irrigation controller's manual to learn more about your specific controller. You can also check out tutorial videos on programming your model of controller. However, all controllers will have the same set of core programming functions. Let's review those programming functions of your controller, as well as a key component of your irrigation system. An irrigation valve is the device that turns water on or off to a series of irrigation sprinklers or a drip system. An irrigation valve is activated automatically via the controller, or it can also be turned on manually. The terms station and zone often are used interchangeably. A station is a circuit on the controller which activates a single irrigation valve, which then sends water to a series of sprinklers or drip tubing. A station waters a specific area of landscaping. A typical residential landscape has several stations. Some may be irrigating lawn, and others may be irrigating areas with plants. A program is a complete watering schedule that tells the controller when to water, how long to water each station, and what days to water on. Most controllers allow for using multiple programs, like programs A, B, or C, for instance. A program has start times, run times, and watering days, which make up a complete watering schedule. A start time tells the controller when to start watering. A start time is the time the first station in a controller program begins to water. An irrigation cycle is completed once all stations in the program have been watered. Most controllers are capable of having several start times programmed to allow watering multiple cycles on any given watering day. A run time is the number of minutes a specific station is programmed to turn on and water. A station's runtime is determined primarily by the type of sprinklers or drip installed and the rate at which the station applies water. Watering days are the specific days of the week or interval schedule in which watering will take place. The number of watering days should be regularly adjusted based on the time of year. Now that we've reviewed some basic irrigation components and controller functions, let's dive into some effective irrigation practices. Our first best practice is to water in the early morning. Watering is best done in the early morning before sunrise when there is less wind and evaporation from the sun. You don't want your irrigation turning on during the heat of the day because the water will evaporate quickly. In fact, up to 20% of the water is lost to evaporation and wind by watering during the day. Our second best practice is to use multiple cycles or start times. Using multiple cycles or start times helps to prevent water runoff and pooling. Most of our soils in Contra Costa County are clay or clay loam, which absorb water very slowly. Using multiple start times will prevent runoff and allow water to be absorbed in the soil, which will promote deeper rooted, healthier plants. So instead of delivering all your water at once using only one start time, we recommend breaking up your total station runtime into three shorter cycles with your three start times separated by about one hour. For instance, instead of watering 12 minutes all at once, you'd water for four minutes at 3 a.m., 4 a.m., and 5 a.m. This helps make sure your water stays in your landscape instead of going down the storm drain. Our third best practice is to use multiple controller programs. You may be wondering why your controller has multiple programs, like programs A, B, and C, for instance. Your controller has multiple programs, so you can select the appropriate number of watering days per week for each station. This allows you to water according to the water needs of the plants on each station. 
For example, some of your stations with low or medium water use plants require watering fewer days per week, while other stations with high water use lawn require watering more days per week. Programming lawn and plant stations, which have vastly different watering needs onto the same program, means you'll either be overwatering your plants or underwatering your lawn. Most people end up overwatering their plants to keep their lawn green. This is where using multiple programs really helps. You can save a lot of water by programming your stations with lawn onto program A, for instance, which can be irrigated more frequently, and your stations with plants onto program B, which can be irrigated less frequently. You can even use an additional program for a vegetable garden or for stations with very low water use plants. Our fourth best practice is to frequently adjust your irrigation controller. One of the most important things you can do to reduce your irrigation water use is to make changes to your controller's irrigation schedule every month. Starting in spring, increase irrigation days until peak summer around July. And then decrease the number of days you irrigate until fall. This approach will maximize your water savings. You'll be surprised to learn that temperature isn't the only factor affecting the water needs of your plants. In fact, during the spring and late summer, the angle of the sun is much lower in the sky and the number of daylight hours are less. And consequently, plant water requirements are much lower too. So even if it's blazing hot in October, you still don't need to irrigate like it's July. Please see our lawn and landscape watering schedule for recommended run times and how many days per week to water throughout the year. This should be your go-to resource. The schedule is developed based on local historical weather and climate conditions of central and eastern Contra Costa County. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of some efficient irrigation techniques and how to program your irrigation controller to water effectively. So set a date with your controller so you too can irrigate like a pro. Make sure to visit our website for our recommended watering schedule which you can use as a guide to develop your own customized schedule. To recap what we've gone over today, just remember to water in the early morning, use multiple start times, use multiple programs, and adjust your controller's watering days as the seasons change. Thank you for watching, and if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and share with a friend.